Everybody says that the time when you were a teenager is the best, but sometimes it's not. You should be enjoying yourself and sometimes you do, but overall you aren't truly happy nor okay with your life. And that was exactly me, a teenager addicted to bad habits, tired of life and depressed so much that my mom even bought me pills that should make me happy. And that shit hit me bro. And after tens of books, two years of self-improvement and a lot of battles <coughs> with myself, I am right now able to tell you nine habits that got me back on track in my teens and get way ahead of my peers as those habits helped me quit all the bad habits and start doing the good ones, develop the discipline like I've never had before, get a better body, get a girlfriend, get out of depression most importantly. And don't even tell me that your life sucks too much that you can't change it especially in the matter of two weeks like that follow three habits for the next few weeks and i'll see you soon there after those two weeks and you will see that i was right that you can change your life and that your life doesn't have to suck like it sucks right now and the first habit that got me back on track is that i got away from porn your brain doesn't recognize whether the experience is real or not you react on something that you believe it's real therefore if a child sees a guy in costume of bear and the child believes that it is really a bear you will react in a way that the bear is actually real therefore when you watch porn you think that it's real sex and your dopamines are fucking at its highest bro you have those dopamine receptors fucking circulating in your mind and because you have such a pleasure in this activity you overdo it and that completely fucks up your dopamine receptors that's why you find yourself sometimes watching after you come something that you're feel so weird about and guilty but not only that you're a porn freak and you're watching really really weird stuff it also desexualizes you right if you watch porn you are harder to turn on your dick just won't get easily dead up because you are desexualized your brain is fucked up from all those degenerate bullshit things like stepsisters furries transgenders and all those fantasies that you have and you've developed because your dopamine receptors are so fucked up so how to quit that shit let me tell you bro you have your nofap streak perhaps and i'm gonna tell you that streaks are totally bullshit first of all you never wish to have a big no fab street you wish to become that guy that just fucks girl like that and fucking can pick any beautiful woman your goal is not the streaks it's the person that you would become if you would be on no fab therefore don't focus on streaks focus on becoming that guy that doesn't fab so right now think of yourself as a guy that doesn't fab what would you do would you be always scrolling on tiktok would you be laying down doing nothing not working out not talking to women, not having eye contact in the public without being scared. That new self-identity will transfer you from porn addict to a guy that can get any girl like that. Habit number two, stop seeing instant gratification as a reward. When I was a younger, every time I ate the real meal, I was allowed to have something sweet as we call it. I saw it as a reward for me that I ate the real meal, you know, the meat and the potatoes. And right now I can reward myself with something sweet. I was always saying to myself, yeah, one sweet won't kill me, right? I ate meat, so I'm allowed to have maybe more of those sweets. Instead of one chocolate bar, have two. And I was saying this over and over again until I became fucking fat. I said it's a reward for me, but in reality, it made me fat and unhappy. Then how the fuck this activity can be seen as a reward? This activity is not a reward, but a self-harming activity. Because if it was reward, it would be doing something good for me, as the reward literally represents something good for you. Then why do you see porn that is harming your soul as a reward? Why do you see junk food as a reward when it's making you fat? Why do you see phone as a re uh, laying down after school, relaxing as a way of relaxation and reward when you literally waste your time and feel guilty about it? So if the things that you see as rewards and perhaps you desire aren't rewards, what are really rewards? The reward is the good workout. The reward is the clean diet. The reward is, I don't know, caring about your health, doing ice bath, because this in and of itself gives you some benefits. Even though it's sometimes hard to do the workout, to be on the clean diet, but at the end of the day, you feel good if you have done that because it's beneficial for you. You don't feel truly happy fapping or eating junk food. You feel truly happy when you're healthy, when you know that you overcame that desire and you, instead of laying down on your bed, 
did the fucking workout. Paradoxically, you will be more happy if you will reward yourself less. Remember that one last time, one last sweet is just an excuse for your weak mind to do the self-harming activity. This one simple different viewpoint on these rewards can literally save your life from obesity, unsuccessful fucking life and unhappiness. So get this shit on your mind. Habit number three, stop listening to sad music and watching sad TikToks. Sad music literally connects with you and helps you understand the feelings that you are going through. You also forget your problems or you feel understood because of the lyric. And if you can express and understood your emotions and find solution to it, you will get dopamine out of it. Therefore, you like so much being sad on your bed and listening to sad music. And after all, you can argument that you feel better after being sad on your bed listening to that music. And I don't doubt that you can for some time because through all of the psychological ways that I've just described to you, you relieve your stress and depression, but you mustn't forget that music is also very programming. When you lay down and listen for a solid two hours that sad music, you hear those sad affirmations and lyrics and words hundreds of times and sometimes you even sing it by yourself. So therefore you're not only listening to sad shit, but you're singing that sad shit too. And if you hear and say something hundreds of times, your mind will take it as a fact and ingrain it into your subconscious mind. Therefore your baseline of happiness will significantly drop because you reminded yourself so many times those sad words and sad lyrics. So I have a challenge for you. For the next two weeks, don't listen to a single sad song. In those following two weeks, your goal will be to try to find your new music taste. Create one happy playlist and play that music even when you're sad. Just dance to it, sing to it, and suddenly you will understand that this sad shit is really causing you depressed. Maybe it's helping you in the short term to relieve your stress for some minutes, but in overall, your baseline of happiness is going down. Habit number four, active and healthy lifestyle. We as humans are mainly comprised of water, yet we don't follow the rules and the behaviors of the water. When the water is still, it becomes stagnant. When you become stagnant, you also become spoiled. And if you're spoiled, that's meaning that you are depressed and unhappy. And that's literally the reason, bro. You're not outside, you're not working out, you're not with your friends doing random shit. Like, you don't fucking move. You are stagnant and you are spoiled. Bro, I don't care how big your problems are. I'm not trying to be conned or disrespect you, but I've been through a lot of problems too. And I can guarantee you that if you will hit fucking gym for four or five times per week and you sooner or later get jacked, you can't be depressed. And also it will culminate to more and more good habits. If you will start working out, you're right now used to doing hard things on daily day basis. Therefore you start to eat healthier because you don't want to lose your progress in the gym. You will quit most likely porn because you don't want to lose testosterone and you want to grow your muscles more. You will quit video games because you right now develop better mindset and you know that it's a waste of time and you'll see it for the first time in your life as a waste of time and not as a way to reward yourself after a hard day in school. So I believe that exercising and starting exercising as a teenager is the single best thing you can do. So fucking grab that dumbbell and go to that gym even though you don't know the best type of exercises. Just show up. Do some random shit with dumbbells. Nobody will laugh at you. They will only help you because in the gym are true bros that have been gone through the same exact shitty things like you. Habit number five, stop worrying about the past. Stop worrying about the past so much. You're a teen, you do shit, you make mistakes, you slip, you learn. It's just supposed to be like that, bro. You're living in the stage of life where anybody would do anything to get to that stage again. So why waste those teen moments, those teen times in your imagination, thinking about past and regret? I had this problem hardly, bro, and every day I cried. I was transforming my mind to that night she rejected me. After some time, I realized how to cure it and stop worrying about the past and switch my mind to the future that is now. The first rule, stop worrying about something that you can't change. You learn from mistakes and there for a reason. 
God puts you in those battles for a reason. He wants you to be where exactly you are right now. Everything bad will reflect on your life positively in some way or another. Right now you can see it as a bad thing. It makes you cry a lot and you're just sad about it. But like me, I was crying almost every day because of that heartbreak. But right now I see it as a positive thing because it got me to the gym and onto self-improvement in such an early age. There's no reason why you should blame yourself for your past behaviors and what you have done in the past because at that time you did what you thought it's the best moreover you can't change it so why just be focusing over and over again imagining how failure you are and how you fucked up it instead of learning from that mistake and trying to become that guy that won't repeat this mistake because you know that this mistake will hurt you and it's hurting you remember that nothing is bad or good it is you that makes it bad or good because you think of it like that habit number six plan your day every day your brain has naturally the prime need for seeking the most easiest and most energy saving task or thing that you can do therefore when you have nothing to do and you're bored you do shit you lay down you watch netflix you're on phone or do those type of shits because it doesn't require that much of a energy but then you blame yourself that you've wasted and you didn't use it for something productive and yeah i was always that i came back to school and i did nothing but since I'm planning my day every single day in Google Calendar and I plan my day from the hour I wake up to the hour when I go to sleep, I'm more productive. It was the biggest productivity hack that I've ever found. Plan your day, literally bro. Because when you don't have a plan and you perhaps came back from school, you have this moment like, so what should I do now? And you get so many thoughts and things that you have to do and perhaps you get overwhelmed or you know that they are hard and you don't want to start them because they are hard. So you just lay down and fuck it, you know? Or your brain, because of the primal programming, will be start doing something that is the most easiest, but that won't change your life significantly, right? So if you want to get better grades in school, do your work, maybe start a business, or just be able to focus on something and work on your own and be productive, then timetable is what will save your fucking life and productivity, bro. And perhaps you will find yourself that you don't follow truly 100% your plan that you've planned the night before. That's important, plan your day night before. It's okay, you know, some things just get in life. Most of the days aren't the way I plan it and it's totally okay. Habit number seven, do what you truly want and fuck others. We are the first generation of men without purpose. We do shit, watch it and eat shit and that's about it. Unlike the men a hundred years ago, like for example Edison that was trying to invent a light bulb, that was his purpose. Or soldiers that were trying to get back from war to be with their families. If you find your life boring or empty, it's because you lack of worthwhile goals and purpose. You're not excited about something. You don't have that drive for something. You're not passionate about something and you don't feel fulfilled because you don't have a purpose and purpose is the most important thing for a man. It's beyond love, it's beyond success, it's beyond every fucking else. And in fact, when I found my purpose, I got the most productive and disciplined and my work and YouTube channel just skyrocketed. Even though my discipline and willpower, nothing changed but only that I discovered purpose and I realized that this is what I want to go all in. When you have purpose, it gives you this boost, this drive, and it gives you energy and discipline because you truly want to do it. So how to find your purpose, how to suddenly become more disciplined and productive just like that. You are a consumer. You consume so much of content that you don't even realize that you have desires that you don't even want to fulfill. So the real question is, what do you want, not others, not the fake desires that you've gained from those Dubai influencers living in Dubai. You've never wanted to live in Dubai. You perhaps wanted to do this. You want to do that. It's your desire, not others, not your parents, your desire. You just have to search for it. You have to put your brain into work and say, hey, for now, for the next two weeks, and you can find your purpose within the next two weeks, and it will flash in your mind like that by journaling, meditating on it, going for a walk, leaving those things that are providing content, like my video. For example, don't watch my videos for the next two weeks and just focus 
on trying to discover your purpose because it will literally save your life it will add sparkle to your boring and empty life and you will genuinely feel happy and wake up happy because of the fact that you have some purpose that you want to fulfill so like i said journal meditate be alone walk stare at your fucking wall just think and don't be scared of your thoughts and then on that purpose after you've discovered it set some clear goals clear deadlines that are realistic and do take action habit number eight excel in all areas of your life everybody thinks that discipline is about doing something hard sometimes doing your chores will level up your discipline way more than doing an ice bath or workout discipline in and of itself is doing something that you don't want to do regardless of the difficulty therefore if you're motivated to do an ice bath because you get some random motivation maybe from that influencer that you saw on instagram it's not about discipline it's about motivation but if you will do your chores and you really don't want to do it, that in and of itself will develop your discipline more than the ice bath that you were motivated for. And the reason why I was able to quit those big bad habits like porn and you know, social media was because I literally became a magnet to XP of discipline. You know, in order to kill a dragon, you have to kill the cows for XP first. And the cows for me, in order to gain some XP, was those small daily day things like cleaning my room, doing chores every time I see it, cleaning up my table, not having a messy room, making my bed every single day, changing my bed sheets often, or just not adding ketchup to my food, not adding that sweetener, or not being on phone whilst chilling. So for sure, if you're not motivated, working out in the rain will give you more level of discipline than as if you would be doing your chores. But what I'm saying is that do everything that you don't want to do, because this will level up you to a fucking iron-minded guy. Habit number nine, care more about your mental health because like i mentioned before nothing is really bad or good it's just how you think of it happiness is not deserved or cost and you don't need million dollars girlfriend or the thing that you think you need in order to be happy the only thing you need for happiness is just your mind and effort because happiness is nothing more than just thinking pleasant for a good share of time. And if you really think that your life sucks and that you just can't be happy and you just feel bad overall and you just don't know why, I have those four exercises that I guarantee you will target your happiness because the reason why you feel bad and you just don't know why is because you have fucked up mental health. And the first that helped me the most is to write daily your thoughts on paper. Just put that shit that you have in your head that is dragging you down, making you feel stressed and unhappy to something. You will find many solutions to your life and you will discover that what you're feeling sad about is just actually not that sad and not that bad and you just suddenly be happier like that. Second exercise is three to five things that you're happy or grateful about. It could sound stupid to you that you will say, hey, today I'm grateful for the trees that are giving us oxygen, enabling us to live. But all your life wishing for something, you wish to be better, you wish to have this and that, and you're always in this wishing mode and you never appreciate a single thing. Therefore, with this exercise, you will develop how to take small things and be genuinely happy about them. The third exercise is 5 to 15 minutes of meditation. Your mind is just so stressed and you don't even realize it. You think that you're relaxing when you're laying down with your phone or playing video games with your friend. But actually, in those moments, your mind doesn't fucking relax so therefore in order to like feel good and relaxed you just have to give your brain a time for relaxation and there's nothing better than just sitting down closing your eyes you don't have to be in this meditation weird pose maybe even lay down and just close eyes and breathe deeply and that's about it for 5 to 15 minutes. Try to just think of nothing. And at the first, it will be hard. You know, it will suck. You'll always drive your mind into something. And perhaps you won't see results in the first like week. But remember that every time you will shift your focus to something undesirable. And then you realize it that you're not there. And you switch it over again into like nothing and into relax mode. This is the one bicep curl that your brain just done. And if you will do those bicep curls over and over again, your bicep, therefore your mind will be fucking big, right? And you will learn to be present and learn to 
be still and relax and do the meditation the right way. And the fourth and totally the last tip today is to learn to be bored. You fill up every moment where you feel even the slightest boredom with constant entertainment. You're in a bus or waiting on a bus stop and you're constantly on your phone. When you're talking with your friend and suddenly there's nothing to be talked about, you instantly go to that phone. Your game is loading and you're instantly on that phone. So just give your mind rest, bro and learn to be bored. Look around, don't be scared of your thoughts. Think, because in those moments where I just were bored, or I can say, I found many ideas to videos. I found many solutions to my life. I found many things that are making me sad and feel bad, that they aren't that bad, and that it's not actually a big of a deal. And many successful people say, learn to be bored, because in those moments, you will get the best ideas. And sometimes they got the best ideas and the business ideas in those moments that made them millions of dollars and save generations of their families. And you want it too, right? You want to retire your mom and dad and retire yourself, enjoy yourself in Bali and do shit. So that's it, Lion. And although I've told you so many tips and tricks and habits today, I don't know you personally. I don't know your struggles. I don't know what you really need in life. And perhaps you've been watching those type of content, you know, the self-improvement for a good share of time, but you just don't see the progress in your life. You just can't change on your own. I provided for you a solution that lays down in the description and that is the one-on-one -on -one free call with me that I call the call in the jungle where we will go through all of your problems and all the things that you want to achieve but you just can't. And based on that, I will help you and create a blueprint in order to achieve what you want or solve the problem that you have. And one reminder, bro, I'm not trying to scare you, but this link won't be here forever as I have a certain capacity. So go down right now, sign up for the time that you are able and just don't miss out this opportunity, bro. And if you're not fancy calling with me, in the description is another gift for you and that is a subscribe button. And if you will click on that, by that you will join our line pack in the jungle. And here you can see we're fucking improving. There are loads of information that will help you. So don't miss out this because genuinely this is the place you need right now. So go down, click on the subscribe button or sign to that one-on-one -on -one free call. Don't be a zebra, become a liar.